hey dear beloved how are you doing today i hope all is well with you now i know i won't be long in this one probably 10 or 15 minutes max yes and then i'll be out so, so guys you ever wonder like me don't know if other people feel that we hear about this so may i put it out there all right so you ever feel like somebody come to you and you just do one pray for them as in you have empathy you know, you feel them struggling you know, but then like there is something bigger like beyond that you just feel and you just sense and you just don't feel the need to pray for them you don't feel the anxious to really pray for them to intercede for them to hold them up but you just feel the strong desire to just allow them to to be in that you know state of discomfort a while not for your personal gain you know so let's get into it this is the feel that i'm talking about so guys personally for me sometimes i do feel that way like literally i have friends i have family I have, you know, I think that I, I, I make friends easily. I don't necessarily keep all the friends that I meet because, you know, like everybody else, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And personally, I can be um, a little bit, you know, not so consistent with new friends. So the old friends that I have, they are around for several reasons. They benefit my life daily and I benefit theirs. So if it is that I don't really see where um, you are, you know, contributing to my life healthily or I can contribute to your life healthily, then I don't really see the need for us to have a, a daily strong friendship. Trust me, that doesn't make me a bad person. It's just the truth. Anyways, so this is it. I don't always feel the need to pray for someone. And this is my reason. So let me just go into it. Because as me I say, me don't know if nobody else feel that we are here, but me I tell you why me feel that we are there. Like there is something beyond my feeling. It's not that I despise the person and want to see the person hurt or stay down there in a sin and sorrow or, you know, in a grievance. No. But I think like there's something inside of me like the Holy Spirit. Yes, I'm going there. Like the Holy Spirit is saying to me, you know what? You know, I cannot always lend my shoulder. I cannot always just give up my time. I cannot always just always just be there, be there, be there, be there, be there, be there. You know, I can support. Nothing is wrong with supporting and being a brother's keeper. But when we now become a place of dependency for someone, that's where we have to allow them to rest and rely on God for themselves. And so sometimes the distress keep on coming, it keep happening simply because they have not yet turned. They have not yet personally made that recognition that they themselves need to have a foundation. They themselves need to have a structured relationship with the Lord and not just run into a pastor, run into a church, run in here, run in there, run in all over the place when you feel like you're under spiritual attack or physical attack or emotional attack. The Lord needs like them too to have a relationship with him same way like oh, our trouble bring we to our knees yeah trouble have a way to push we to necessity trouble have a way to teach us to be fervent in prayer trouble have a way to fix some foundation that we are now able in this 2024 can say you know we are a woman of god we are a man of god we are faith we are substance simply because of the troubles that we have encountered simply because of the thirst and the need and the desires that we have you know we have those things we we we, we allow those things to grow and so we have the relationship simply because we have our situation that causes us not to be a stranger to God, you know, causes us want to be a part of the inheritance, part of the kingdom, part of those with authority, you know, so that we cannot always rely on others, but, you know, we can, through our own faith and our own relationship, 
go to God, make intercessions, declare things for herself. You know, stand up, do some real dangerous prayer, and then look at somebody here. Simply because we have our own foundation, but we never just get them so. Situation pushes us and causes us to want, want to have a change life, a life where we have authority, a life where we have power, a life where we have faith, a life where we can depend on God. And so here it is in um, Psalms. Psalms 51 verse, I think it's verse, verse 17. I'm looking in the Bible, it's verse 17. Psalms 51 verse 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. And so here it is that the Bible is even saying, listen, your broken state, your sad state, the broken and sad state of our friends, of our loved ones, of our co-worker. The Lord is not going to like despise them. The Lord is not going to turn them away. So they need not to always come to us. They need not to always put us in that position where God should be. They should not always put us in that state of reliance where God should be, you know? But God will not turn them away. And it's for us to educate them, to teach them, to let them know that, listen, God will not turn you away. Your brokenness, your sad state, your sinful and retributive lifestyle, that state, you know, that condition, that broken condition that makes you want to reach out to a minister for prayer, that makes you want to reach out to a sister for prayer, that makes you want to cause somebody just to cry on their shoulder. God will not despise you. Right? God doesn't see you worthless. God doesn't see you without value. But even in that broken state, He wants you to know that He is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. He wants you to know that you can come to Him. Yes, you may be a prostitute. Yes, God wants you to come to Him. A fornicator, God want you to come to him. A liar, God want you to come to him. A murderer, God want you to turn from that lifestyle. God want you to turn from that way, from that path. A broken and a contrite heart. He will not despise. He doesn't hate you. He's not saying, listen, me no want nothing to do with you. No come to me, no bow to me. He needs you to set him up in your life, to put him at that place of reliancy, of dependency, consistently. He wants you to have a dialogue, faithful relationship with him. He wants you to live a life where you can acknowledge him, acknowledge him to the point where you can surrender to him. And this is why out there in your struggle and in your pain, the Lord will come to your aid because he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to reveal himself through you so that you too can know that he is real. So that you too can know that he wants to have a relationship with you. So that you too can know that he needs you to see that you were created for better things. That in spite of all ruthless you are in spite of all you have done some shameful and embarrassing things he wants you to know that these may might have been the things that you have stumbled upon through sin and rebellion and maybe um you know just you doing your own thing on your own time even though you have entered these states these positions in your life it doesn't mean that I created you for this. It doesn't mean that this is where I want you to be. Like the, the son that asked for his inheritance and went away and lived that riotous lifestyle. He being the good father is waiting for your return. 
is looking for your return. He's looking for you to see it necessary, to know that you are purposeful, to know that you are loved, to know that you are cared for, and to know that, you know, you can have a washed, renewed, and a transformed lifestyle because of his mercy, because of his grace that brought redemption, that brought salvation. Yes. And so, at first, when I used to feel this way, I used to say, like, why me feel a way about a person here? Like, what a person here do me? And it took a long time for me to realize that, listen, I'm not God. I'm not always available. And even so, I believe that ministers, pastors, prior warriors, intercessors, those who call themselves prophets and prophetess, should take away themselves from that position of reliancy and allow their congregation and allow the cinnamon and allow, you know, the backsliders to see God, to desire to have a foundation built in God because the same authority that I possess, that they possess, is the same authority is given through salvation to those that would believe to those that will call on his name. And so too much believers want to take away the glory of God. But he said he will share his glory with nobody. And so you have to be careful. Yes, you believer, you intercessor, you minister, you have to be careful about making someone else pain about you and not about God. Making somebody else pain be about you feeling accomplished, you know, feeling like, you know, at least I have this. But the ministry that you carry is not yours. The power that you have is not yours. The work that you are doing is not for your glory, but it's for the glory of God. And people must see this. People must know this because God wants to have workers, laborers in the vineyard. That's why enough of us are burned out, frustrated, overwhelmed because we allow ourselves to be God. We allow ourselves to be a place of reliance too much and not allowing persons to have to build a nurtured relationship with God. Not allowing God to speak. Not allowing God to direct them. Because you are being God. You are taking that place where God should be. And persons need to know that the Lord wants to develop them. The Lord wants them to grow. It's true. It's literally true, guys. How I drink beer. Listen, listen, listen. It's my family. Them are gonna do this. Them are gonna do this to me. But listen, listen. My brother and I say, "Me the pan life." If God never tell me, tell me say I'm hungry. Talk the truth. Anyways, that's just my family, guys. They do these things. I don't know. Maybe you can tell off what of it. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Yes. The Lord wants the unsaved person to know that, listen, salvation is for you. Redemption is for you. Grace is sufficient for you. Yes. There's this other scripture here, over here in Hebrews. And it was talking about Hebrews chapter 8. You can go on ahead and read Hebrews chapter 8. It was talking about, all right, let me read it. It says, <clears throat> For if that first covenant have been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. 
for finding fault with them. He said, Behold, the day cometh, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they, sh and they shall not teach any man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. Hallelujah to God. So, Wherever there is um, too much dependency on humans, on men and women of God, there can be a falling away. Because simply where there's too much dependency, it means that they're, they're not, persons are not being taught, they're not being edified, you know? So they become 100% reliant and dependent on somebody to hear from God for them, to tell them what God wants to do. But here it is that the Lord was tired of, of this, you know, recurring arrow of men. And so he's saying, you listen, the day will come where I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. And this is that day. This is that age that we are living in where the Spirit of God has been poured out on all flesh. So you and I, we too can have a personal relationship with God. We don't go to any priest anymore. We don't bring no put, no pigeon. We don't build, bring no spotless livestock, you know. In fact, we couldn't even afford for this if this was still the day that we were living in like the um with the book of leviticus where we have to have all those things to make the sacrifice some of us couldn't even afford it but here it is that salvation that grace that the spirit of god is poured out on all flesh so that all of us could can know god all of us can come to him. All of us can ask for our own sins to be cleansed. All of us can ask for our own eyes and ears to be open. All of us can ask for our own faith to be increased. All of us, you and I, can have a dialogue with God, can build a foundation in God. You know, all of us can come to him now. And so we need not to overwhelm any one person. Wherever there is too much reliancy, there is going to be a fall away. There is going to be a breakaway. There is going to be confusion. Moses went up to receive the commandments. And look what the people did. The people build a golden calf. The people build um, um, gods to worship. So whenever that person is, is no longer around, what will you do? What happened when you hear of that person, you know, backsliding, that person missing the mark? How will you feel? Will you also miss the mark? Will you also believe that grace is not sufficient? Will you cause that person's sin and transgression and arrogancy to block you from um, elevating in God? Will you fall in the state of hopelessness? When your idols 
when the persons that you rely on is rumored in the streets doing all different type of stuff where would that leave you you have to be dependent on the lord yes we are still to be our brother's keeper the lord is not the god of confusion yes we can pray for each other yes we need encouragement from each other yes we need a word sometime yes we need to go into the sanctuary we are the church yes we need to gather to worship yes we need to gather to get the encouragement from each other but while doing that spiritual growth is an individual process while doing that when judgment day come each of us will have to answer to the life that we have lived and so each of us must have our own faith our own uh, um, um, relationship with God because salvation was given to all of us our transgressions have been forgiven our iniquity have been purged yes grace is for you yes you can do it through God and so guys it took a long time for me to realize this like literally because as I said I was wondering why am I always feel away they're like <sighs> Like, my always feel a little sometime. And when we look at it, I say, no, but I don't really hear that person here. But I don't want to see that person here. So why you don't want me to pray for that person here? You know, why, why, why? But God wanted me to move away so that he can go in that place. Many of us, too, we are endurance. Yes, we are endurance because we are all to seek the glory of God for ourselves. We are self-promoting. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful and allow the, the unsaved to become saved. Allow them to become saved allow them to build their own personal relationship with the Holy Ghost with God yes strengthen them pray for them but don't don't put yourself in that position where they rely on you instead of relying on God daily all right so God bless you bye